Hello, my name is Mikey Weir. Today, I'm going to give you a little lesson on how to fly fish. Fly fishing is a fishing technique in which we try to imitate the natural diet of the fish. In this case, we're going to be talking about trout. So we're going to be trying to imitate the natural diet of the trout, which in most cases is aquatic insects. And so dry fly fishing is a technique in which we cast a fly onto the water and let it float perfectly down natural with the current just so it looks like a natural fly on the water in order to trick a fish into coming up and eating that fly. The first thing that you're going to want to learn is the overhead cast. The overhead cast is a casting technique primarily used to fish with dry flies. Dry flies are flies that float on the surface of the water. They're designed to imitate the adult form of most aquatic insects. So as a beginning fly caster, there are three main elements to the overhead cast. The stroke which is the distance the rod moves back and forth through the air. The timing, which is letting the rod pause a little bit in both directions to give the line time to unfold. And the timing is going to change depending on how much line you have out. So the more line you have out, the longer you're going to need to wait for that line to unfold. So stroke, timing, and then application of power. The loading of the rod and the stopping of the rod. Most people think the more power you put into the rod, the further the line's going to shoot out there. But with fly fishing, that's not the case. It's all in the technique. And so, as you push the rod forward, you're going to load the rod or bend the rod. You're going to give energy from your arm into the rod. And in order to transfer that energy from your rod into your line, you need to stop the rod. And so, that's a key element of a good fly cast, is that very definite stopping of the rod. Say this is a o'clock and I'm looking at you so this is going to be my two o'clock this is going to be ten o'clock so I'm going to bring the rod back to two o'clock boom stop the rod I'm going to come forward and stop the rod so you need a very definite stop in both directions so I'm going to boom 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 so it's a good idea sometimes to stand sideways watch your casso that'll give you a good indication of the timing and then you can translate that timing to both forward and back cast So a good way to determine whether you're getting a good overhead cast is to look at the fly line as it comes over the tip of the rod. If you're getting a nice tight loop, then that means your stroke and your timing are pretty good. If you're getting a big open wide loop and your line's really opening up, then it means your stroke and your timing are a little off. And so you need to tighten that up a little bit. The object is to throw a nice tight loop. Another thing you want to avoid is a whipping noise. If you're coming forward too quick, if you're not pausing long enough on your back cast, you're going to hear a, a snapping noise like the cracking of a bullwhip. And if you hear that, then that means that you got to pause a little bit longer and let your line unfold behind you a little bit longer. Typically what I'm going to do is cast upstream and let the fly drift downstream. And so the object is you want your fly to be floating perfectly natural with the current. And if your fly is imitating what the bubbles on the surface of the water are doing, then you know you're getting a good float. If it's dragging, or swinging across the current, or it's moving faster than the current, or slower than the current, then you're not getting a good natural drift. And the fish are going to key into that. And so if you're not getting that perfect natural drift, then often the fish are not going to bite it. So once your fly is out on the water, you're going to want to keep a watchful eye on your fly the entire time. Unlike regular fishing with bait or a lure, you're not going to feel the fish take your fly. In order to get a perfectly natural drift, you have to have a little slack in your line. And so you really need to be able to see when the fish comes up and grabs your fly, or a lot of times you'll miss him. The best way to set the hook is to pull across and downstream. So if the current is flowing downriver like so, I'm going to want to set across and downstream, keeping the rod low. And then once you have a fish on the line, there's two things you can do. You can either control the line with your index finger and strip the line in. And then if the fish goes to run, you can use your finger as a drag to let a little bit of line out. Or if your line's close enough to the reel, you can get the fish on the reel and let the drag of the reel do the work. So if the fish goes to run, the tension of the drag is going to pull some line out without breaking your line. And then you can reel the fish in. If he goes to run, let him back out. So once you get good at fly fishing, I guarantee you're going to catch a lot more fish than you did with your old spin fishing techniques. Along with good fishing comes a lot of responsibility. So if you're catching more fish than you're going to keep and eat, you're going to want to learn good catch and release techniques. 
These include using barbless hooks, always wetting your hands before you touch the fish, never touching the gills of the fish, and holding the fish out of the water for the least amount of time possible. All right, well, good luck out there. I hope you have fun. Enjoy the fly fishing.